Whoa. So I said I wasn't going to make a movie of the weaving, but there were a lot of people that were at the wrong sessions. <laughs> so on this week that were in the wrong class, class period. So some of you may have missed the weaving. So I'm gonna give you a quick summary of the weaving. Um, we talked about how in early California, people who were wealthy wore clothes that were made out of silk. The clothes were traded um, back and forth. Um, silk was generally created in China from silkworms. And I will post the videos that go with the silkworms and the videos that go with the weaving um, so that you can watch them. So silk was traded with early California um, for otter furs and for other things that could be found like leather from the cow hides. Um, things got traded to China that were from California. And then in return, we got silk back. And so only people that were super wealthy could wear clothing that was made out of silk because it was very expensive. Um, most people, most average people or most poor people wore clothing that was called homespun. And there are two kinds of homespun. There is homespun made of plants and there is homespun made of animal fiber. So an example of homespun made from plants would be flax or linen are materials that are made with plants. Um, an example of a, a fiber that is made from an animal would be wool from sheep. Um, so most of the yarn that we're using <laughs> to do our weaving is yarn that um, is produced from sheep's wool. So um, in other words, if you could tell if somebody had a lot of money if they were wearing silk clothing and silk kind of silk as a fabric kind of has a shimmery sheen to it. Um, you could also tell if somebody was wearing homespun because it tended to be more rough and scratchy. So as you were walking down the street, you could look at somebody and say, well, that guy doesn't have a lot of money. His, his fabric on his shirt is homespun. Or you could say, oh, that man has a silk cravat on. So he must have a lot more money. So um, fabric kind of became a way for you to tell if people had money or not. And it became sort of a social thing that, um, you know, wealthy people look different than average people just because of the fibers of the clothing that they wore. Nowadays, we wear clothing that is, um, unless you're wearing like designer clothing or you're wearing, like you have some kind of purse that has a designer logo on it, it's a little harder to tell if somebody by the, by their, the fabric of their clothing, if they're poor or they're wealthy. But um, back in the 1600s, 1700s and 1800s, that was one of the ways that people could tell if you had money or not was the fabric that your clothes were made from. So also we want to remember that we, when this, when the Spanish came to California, the native Californians didn't wear clothes. And so kind of the first thing that the Spaniards wanted to do when they started the missions was make clothes for all of these naked people. And they weren't used to seeing people without clothes on. So they immediately taught the native Californians how to weave and how to weave homespun so that they could have clothing for them. So it, it and then it continued on. They Once they made clothing for the native Californians, they started making clothing for um, each other and for everybody that lived in California. So silk was for wealthy people, homespun, was for people that were more poor. Um, you guys are going to weave a pouch. This is my sample pouch that I made a few years ago. And you have a little loom that was in your bag. So you have um, this that was in your bag and um, or you have this loom, sorry, that was in your bag. And that loom is going to make a little pouch. 
and the pouch is going to open on the top and it's going to be closed on the bottom. So I'm going to show you how to make the pouch right now. I'm going to screen share for you so that you can see if you were not at the session or if you were late or if you were in the wrong session. Um, so you are going to want to have your loom facing with these lines at the top. That's the top of your loom. So I put a little arrow on mine. This is the top. You can see that I have these horizontal lines. They're kind of like upside down U's and these have to go near the top. This is the part of the pouch that opens, okay? It will automatically open. This down here is where you wanna start. So I'm going to start by making a knot on the left-hand corner at the bottom. And a knot is basically a circle with a tail. So I'm going to make a circle with a tail. I'm gonna pull it through. And then I'm going to do that again. So I'm gonna make a circle with the tail and then I'm gonna pull the tail through. Now weaving is a process of going over and under and over and under. And so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to lick my yarn here and then I'm going to poke it through my this is called a shuttle. It's really a popsicle stick, but in weaving terms, it's called a shuttle. So now I've threaded this like a needle, okay? And so I'm going to go down here at the bottom. I'm gonna start out with under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under. And I'm just alternating and you can see that my stick is going under, over, under, over, under, over. And it doesn't matter which you start with. Then I'm gonna pull it through. And I'm gonna kind of pull it to the bottom. Now I'm going to turn my loom over. Okay, so I'm turning it over to the other side and I'm gonna do the same thing over here under, over, under, over, under, over. It doesn't matter which you start out with. And I'm gonna pull it across. Okay, now I'm gonna turn it over again. You're constantly gonna be turning the loom over because you're making a pouch. So you're gonna have two sides. There's gonna be weaving on both sides of the loom. Now I'm on my, I'm back to my first, my first weaving. And I started out by doing under. So I want to do the opposite of under. I'm going to make my stick go the opposite of the yarn, right? This stick has to be opposite of the purple. So I started out with under. So I'm going to make the stick go over, then under, then over, then under. So I want to make the stick do the exact opposite thing from the yarn. So if you look at this, this yarn is going over the white string. The stick is going under. So you want it to be exactly opposite. This one, the purple is going under the white string and the stick is going over. So it has to be doing the opposite for you to actually be weaving. Now I'm gonna pull it through and I'm gonna tamp it down. And then I'm gonna turn my loom over. We're not making a rug, we're making a pouch. So we're gonna turn it over. And now I started out with under, my purple is going under the white string. So I'm gonna do make my stick go over. And I'm going over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under. I'm double checking to make sure that my stick is opposite of the row that I just wove. So if this purple is on top, I went over, the stick is under, right? So I'm just double checking that I'm doing the opposite thing. If you do the same thing on all the stitches, it will fall apart. It won't make a pouch. 
So you have to make sure that if you went over on this purple, the stick is under. And then I'm going to pull it through. OK, then I'm going to come over to the next side. So I've turned it over again. I'm on the next side. My last stitch was over, so that means my stick has to start out with under. So I'm going under, over, under, over, under, over. And I'm just checking to make sure, see on this last stitch, my purple went under the white string. So now my stick has to go over. It has to be doing the opposite. One more, and then I'll show you how to add a new color. So this one, the purple is going, I'm trying to see if this is going, um, it's going over. So I'm gonna start out with under, and then I'm gonna show you how to add more string, more yarn. And you wanna always sort of tamp it down because you want it to be really tight. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you how to add more. I'm gonna add yellow. And just like with baskets, you never want to pull longer than an arm's length, right? You don't want to pull longer than an arm's length of yarn because it just gets tangled. And then you've got a problem. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lay down the yarn next to side by side, right? And I'm going to do a circle with a tail. That's what a knot is, it's a circle with a tail. And then I'm gonna pull the tail through the hole. And I wanna pull both colors through the hole. And so it looks like that. And that's how you make a knot. Then I'm gonna pull it tight and I'm gonna trim it. Now don't worry about having knots on the outside of your pouch because you can always tuck them into the pouch and you won't see them. So my pouch, has no knots on the outside. It sure has a lot on the inside <laughs> where I tuck them in. All right, and then I'm going to I'm going to pull that through. And now I'm just going to do my weaving with the yellow. So I, uh, my last one was under, so I'm going to start out with over. I'm going to double check it to make sure that whatever I'm doing with the stick is the opposite of what happened with the last yarn that passed through. And then I'm going to pull it through. And it's a little hard to pull the knot through. It'll want to get stuck, but once you get it through, so now you can kind of see the knot here. I'm flipping over to my next side. This is under, so I'm starting with over. And I'm going to pull this through and tamp it down. And then you start having, the, this is one that's been done a little bit. So you want to really start pulling it tight. You can kind of see my knots. Um, you cannot see the white string. There are no white stripes of string. If you have white stripes of string that you can see, you're doing it wrong. You're not alternating between the stick and the string, and that's going to fall apart. You can also see that I have stitching on both sides. If you only have stitching on one side, you're making a little rug, and that's not what we're doing. We're turning the loom each time, and we're weaving around the cardboard so that we have weaving on both sides. You guys can see that I have it on both sides, right? Okay. All right. I hope this helped you. Um, if you were either late or you were in the wrong session, or we also had Norma pulling people um, to do times tables. And so that kind of made people miss a little bit too. So I will post this video for you. And I will post the other videos about sheep shearing and, and homes, weaving homespun and also using a spinning wheel, okay? 
so that you can watch them later um, on your own time. Okay. All right. Thanks for joining me. I'm going to stop sharing. <laughs> and hopefully I explained that okay. I told myself I was never going to make another video as long as I lived. <laughs> and look, I just made another video. Woohoo. All right. Thanks for joining me.